Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of CPNC. Now for those eagle eyes out there, can you notice anything new in the... Uh... Well, it's not a studio, is it? We've been over this and it's not a studio, it's just, a, it's just an office space. Notice any addition to the office space? Yeah, that's right. Brand new coaster. Wife went absolutely ballistic yesterday. There was a glass on here, there was a mug on here, there was a cup on here. She was not happy. But anyway, let's get into the show. Now, where did I put that transition? It's in here. Here it is. Transition. Come on, that was funny, right? So in yesterday's show, we broke the news, not worldwide, but we broke the news on our channel that Geraint Thomas had crashed in the Tour de Suisse. Literally, as I was pressing the upload button to post the video, the news came through saying he'd crashed. And looking at the pictures on Twitter, it looked like he potentially might have been out of the Tour de France. But is he out of the Tour de France? Well, the update this morning and at the time of recording this, at 8.20, well, it looks like G might have got away with it relatively unscathed. He tweeted this morning saying, Thanks for all your messages. Gutted to be leaving the Tour de Suisse, but luckily I'm all okay. I hit my head and needed stitches above my eye, so the doctor stopped me getting back on my bike. It just means I'll need some big training rides now next week. Hands over the eyes monkey emoji. Thumbs up emoji. So there you go. Didn't even know Geraint Thomas was a Jamaican. And then later in another tweet, he also posted, Oh, and I lost another pair of glasses. Hands over the eyes monkey emoji. Squishy face, oh no emoji. Hashtag hard times. Hashtag send supplies. So yeah, it appears that he is in good spirits, I guess, and um, he is gonna make it to the Tour de France. I dare say his training schedule is gonna change dramatically now because he's not gonna have the Tour de Suisse in his legs. So it's gonna be interesting to see if he can go there with, with better form potentially. Now he can get some more specific training in or will it hinder him because he's not racing um, at the level he needs to be racing to, to hit those numbers he needs to hit that come to Tour de France, who knows. I reached out to G this morning, sent him a text message just to say, uh, hope you're well mate and uh, get well soon. And his reply was, thanks mate, thumbs up emoji. Was lucky in the end, I guess. In other news, two riders have received lifetime bans from the Grand Fondo New York events company who run the GFN NY World Championships. On May 19th, their World Championships took place and two riders failed out of competition doping tests the previous day. What makes this story even more bizarre is that one of the riders, Felipe Mendez, tried to take on his twin brother's identity, who'd also registered but didn't turn up to race, in an attempt to try and avoid detection. He also turned up to the start line the following day with a broken wristband. It had obviously clearly been tampered with. And again, that was another attempt to try and avoid detection and change his identity so he could get away with it. The guy finished 71st. The other rider who got popped, Gabriel Raff, only finished 25th. So out of both of them, neither of them did it very well, did they? Back in 2015, another rider also got popped for exactly the same infringement, and guess what? He won it. There was also a woman that got done for the same thing. She had testosterone in her system, she finished third. So at least she made it onto the podium. Like, if you're gonna do it, geez, do it properly. I do not condone doping in any way, shape or form. Both riders have received lifetime bans from GFMY events. That makes the total of positive riders tested on the GFMY seven riders now in the past nine years, which I guess is kind of a good thing in the fact that, you know, a Grand Fondo is willing to, um, to test riders out of competition prior to the event and also in the event. Um, so it can only be a good thing that they're getting tested, but why these people feel the need to dope during a Grand Fondo, I mean, why would you, I mean, I know why you dope, uh, you know, as a professional, because there's so much money involved and there's there's a lot going on there, but for Grand Fondo, it's like... Let's talk about beef now. And no, I'm not talking about the clenbuterol-ridden beef that Alberto Contador supposedly ate by mistake. I'm talking about the beef between Contador and Schleck. In a recent interview with Sporza, Schleck said, We take people who get caught doping 99% of them stand there and say it was a system. It's not my fault. It was the pressure. People who are alcoholic, you ask them, why did they start drinking? They say, I had a tough time at work or my wife left me. She's sleeping with a bloody gardener. That's all excuses. They all stand there in that position like they're the victim. But they're not, you know. You have to see it from different perspectives. I can say today, I didn't win the bloody Giro 
because Danilo De Luco was doping. Which is true in one way. But you know, I don't even go there. I haven't said this before. You're hearing me say that now for the first time. So in the first part of the interview, Schleich was talking about Alberto Contador and the 2010 Tour de France, which Schleich has actually retroactively won back in 2012 after Contador was done for doping violations. But he claimed it was bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Now think about this. As a professional rider, all you want to do is win the Tour de France. Yeah, all right. On the history books, 2010, Tour de France winner, Andy Schleck. But he doesn't get to stand on the podium in first position. He doesn't get the adulation of the fans. He doesn't get the prize money. His team don't get to celebrate with him the fact that they all put in so much effort and won the Tour de France. And then in the years to come, he doesn't what? Get to double, triple his wages because he's the Tour de France winner? He has to sit there in second place? And then you've got somebody who cheated, stood on the podium, taking all the plaudits, his name's everywhere, he's getting the attention, everything's about the winner of the Tour de France. His earnings go up, sponsorship deals come in, life is good. Then two years later, he gets popped. It's just so unfair. But no one can take that moment away that he had in 2010 when he was stood on top of the podium. And no one can give Andy Schleck that moment back. And I know, before you leave a comment below, I'm sure there's people out there who will say that Andy Schleck was doping. That's cool. But then how far down the line do you go? Now moving on, and Jose Babalocchi has recently been talking to Cycling News about Chris Froome and his crash, saying it's probably going to be a life-changing experience and it's going to be one that's going to be tough to get over. So back in 2003, and one of the most iconic moments of that tour was Jose Babalocchi's crash. He was second on GC, less than a minute behind Lance Armstrong when he went down the road suffered a compound fracture to his femur. And um, you'll remember the story. Lance Armstrong avoided the crash, went over the gravel, went onto a field, did a bit of cyclocross, jumped over a ditch, got back on his bike and carried on riding. But Jose Vlocki wasn't so lucky and he ended up suffering a fracture to the leg. And um, well, he was never the same rider again. 75th in the 2005 Tour de France, 39th in the 2005 Vuelta. He never reached the heights that he did back in 2003 and ultimately was never the same rider again. Are we going to see Froome back on a bike? And if we do, how good is he going to be again? Only time will tell, I guess. Now, before we get into the comments, because, whoa, there is some quality comments coming today. Let's get into the last news story. And this comes out of Cycling Weekly. And the headline reads, Pay out for yoga teacher hit by cyclist as she crossed the road looking at her phone. This young lady walked out into the middle of the road with a phone in her hand looking down at her phone. At the last minute, she saw the cyclist that was coming. He tried to avoid her. She tried to avoid him. And in doing so, she walked right back into his path, knocked her unconscious, and she's getting a huge payout for it. She claims that she didn't see the cyclist until the last second, probably because she was looking at her phone. And when she tried to step back onto the traffic island, he tried to take evasive action, and in doing so, actually moved back into her path and uh, hit her, knocked her unconscious. Eyewitnesses all around say it was her own fault because she wasn't looking where she was going and she still gets a payout from it. What baffles me even more about this story is the judge ruled in her favor, but said that she has to take 50% responsibility for it. So if she has to take responsibility for it, then that in effect is proving her guilt of the fact that she wasn't looking where she was going and the accident could have been avoided had she taken her eyes off her phone and looked at the road. Now, what kind of precedent does this set? If you walk out in front of a motorcycle, a bicycle or a car now, if you're looking at your phone and not looking where you're going, you can get hit by them and you can potentially earn thousands of pounds from it. What? Surprisingly, we had a lot of comments for the uh, the Chris Froome conspiracy video um, and we'll read a few now. Mikkel said, how many more Brits have to crash before Cam and Pritch are called up by Ineos? It is only a matter of time now. I think there's, I think I'm third in line. Bob Coleman said that GCN said he had a compound fracture of the femur. That isn't possible to fake. Yes, his hospital photo doesn't look legit, but still, you should follow up on this and cite references. Bob, just because GCN said something doesn't make it true. I'm not saying it's not true. Watch this. I have got a compound fracture of my femur. Look at this picture. That doesn't mean I've got a compound fracture of my femur. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Just because GCN say it don't make it true. Although I do believe it is true. This is one of my favourite comments. Gary Street, Chris, you are a knob for entertaining these Twitter idiots. 
minus 20 credibility points. You cannot find anything more newsworthy, nobber. <laughs> but I did reply to Gary and I said, thanks Gary, you gain plus 20 credibility points for your honest opinion. To which he replied, I call it how I see it, plus 20 points right back for responding. So let's put this whole conspiracy thing to bed. I never believed it. I believed what was portrayed in the, in the media. If that makes me stupid, then so be it. But let's just put this conspiracy thing to bed. But then again, there's not even any footage of G's crash. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. It helps me no end and appeases my ego when you decide to subscribe to this channel. So if you want to keep abreast of all the cycling news from my point of view, then make sure you subscribe. Please leave those comments down below. I love reading your comments. I love responding to your comments. It's probably the best part of actually having a YouTube channel responding to some of your comments. So keep that up. I absolutely love it. And until next time,